Good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining me today. This is our Tai Chi Forms class. Let's get started with just some basic warm ups. Check, are we in our prepare? Right? This is our soon to be natural position. Shoulders width apart, perfectly straight feet. Quick check, head lifting up, shoulders hang down. Waist or lower back, relax. Slight bend in the knees. Okay. I feel like we need to move our shoulders and our neck a little bit, right? So let's do some circles with our head. We're turning side to side. Maybe you just want to look over the shoulder. Maybe this is what feels good. Maybe you want to make a circle with your nose so it's a little bit smaller. Maybe you want to look up and down. Okay, we all have different things for our neck very specifically that feel good. So it's first thing in the morning. Just take a moment. Work those kinks out. Okay, wherever you are, if you're doing circles, drop the chin to the chest or just come back to neutral if you're going side to side, everyone comes back to neutral eventually. Okay, shoulders, maybe it's alternating, maybe it's together, maybe it's whole arm circles. Just take a moment, get these joints moving one way and then the other, get everything flowing, okay? Maybe you want to crisscross and open back, squeezing those shoulder blades together. I really want you to feel these joints opening. Let that energy flow. Let's do two more circles. Good morning. And then we'll let them hang down, shake them out, let them hang. And then we're going to hit our waist for a moment before we practice, okay? So maybe a little bit more bend in the knees. And remember, turn from your torso to let the arms swing. So we're turning and we're letting our torso lead that movement. Really try to have like a Tai Chi pole is what we call it from the crown of your head through your spine that's rotating on an axis. I think it's Tai Chi Master. There's a movie where it's uh, Jet, Jet Li and in this movie, He's a, like literally bouncing everything off of him through this movement. Things are just like coming at him and just bouncing off. So slowly he's off. So that's what I want you to imagine is like, if something's coming at you, you're like sending it to one side, sending it to the other side, back and forth, right? We're just using this rotation. And this is where the Tai Chi power comes from. Good, slowly come back to center. So this is what I want you to bring to your practice today. We were working on this in our beginner class this week, right? This turning from our weight. Okay, I want you to bring that into your practice today. Remembering that everything starts in our legs, right? So that nice solid foundation that we've really been acquiring through our beginner class, right? That solid heavy leg, the waist leads the movement, right? So we're turning from our center and then we say it's expressed in the hands and fingers. Okay, so I want you to like, kind of tune into this today. All right, you ready to practice? We're gonna do the whole section. Remember, if you're new to this class, focus on the footwork because everything, our foundation comes from our footwork and then we build from there, all right? So I'm gonna turn and face the other direction. This is so as we practice, we all move together, all right? Ready? Let's start and prepare. Shoulders with apart stance. Doing our checklist. Head lifting up, shoulders down. Armpits open. Waist relaxed. Soft bend in the knees. Nice straight feet. All right, deep breath. Take a moment. Tune into the feet. Let go. Release any tension you might feel. Relaxing the forehead and the jaw. Those shoulders hang down even more. We're finding length through our spine while gently lifting through the crown of the head. Feel that weight centered in both of your feet, nice and heavy through the legs. Deep inhale, large exhale and release. Opening, rotate the arms, lifting up shoulder height and shoulder width, they just float up. Then the upper arms go down, the forearms, and the palms push down and sit in front of your hips. Shift the weight to your left. Turn and open to the right side. 
right arm reaches out in front, left arm bends underneath and we step to 12 o'clock. Left arm lifts up, right palm pushes down, ward off left. Shift back to the right, turn your whole body on your left heel. Rotate both arms, close the arms and step to three o'clock. Right arm hinges up, ward off right. Both arms rotate and go to your right corner. Shift your weight back, turn from your waist. Arms go to your left corner. Touch the center of your right forearm. Expand up and out for press. Open up both arms nice and flat. Pulling back, come over a imaginary ball, sit up the palms and then push. Flatten the arms, show pulling from the left arm, turning on your right heel, press down. We're gonna make a hook as we relax our left foot. Step to nine o'clock, standing ward off and strike. Raise hands as next, shift back and turn. We're gonna step to 12 o'clock, open up the hook, touch with the right heel. It's like a clap and miss, empty stance. Both arms go down, circle. Left arm comes on top and we close and step. Right arm passes on the outside, comes up overhead, white crane spreads its wing. Look at your right palm. Left arm comes up, right arm goes down. Then they switch, sit up that right palm as you step. Brush off that table, right hand to shoulder and then strike with the right palm. Reach out like somebody's pulling you, step closer in. Pull them back. Arms go up and down as we change to our left heel, hands from salute. Brush knee, swing the right arm down as you step. Open up, right hand to shoulder, forward and back with the arms to show striking. Okay, other side. Shift back, left arm comes up, turn the arm and leg together. Swing the left arm down, look away from your screen, step out, open up, left hand to shoulder and then out for a strike. Shift back, right arm comes up, turn the arm and leg, swing the right arm down, sit up the palm, step out, brush knee, and strike with the right palm. Almost there, hand strums the loop, reach out, pull back, up and down with the arms, hand strums the loop. Last brush knee, swing the right arm down, Step, open up, and strike. Parry, block, and punch. Shift back, left arm comes up. Turn the arm and leg together, just like brush knee. Both arms go down, circle, make a fist, touch with the heel. Open up, transition, step, parry to the side. Left arm and leg go out together, and then we punch. A parent closing up, arms separate, palms face the sky. We show breaking a grab, sit up the palms and push. Cross hands, turning the torso arm rotates, chopping out corner direction, rotate the left foot. Fingers point down, step in, cross the arms at the bottom, and then lift up, both arms open up, small circles so the palms face down, then upper arms, forearms, palms pushing down in front of the hips for closing. And then we return to our original position, fingertips brush the sides of the thighs. Whew. Okay, how are you feeling? Grab a drink of water. That was like seven solid minutes of practice. You guys are doing great. All right, where are we getting stuck? Feet. 
feet? Which portion is the question? <laughs> when I'm facing to my left <coughs> and the, the arms are section. swinging, I'm getting my feet mixed up. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Yet yeah, unmute yeah. yourself for me. Yeah, I was there gonna say it's a it's the feet coordinated with the hand. Okay. When we're coming back. When you're turning away from the screen. Right. That's the hardest one because we do five on the one side and then one on the other side. Or is it four and one? Sorry. But there's so many on the one side, and then there's this one that's like, whoa. <laughs> what else? I need the whole last sequel, the whole whole last part with the child and the parent and the. <laughs> oh, the parent block and punch. Okay. <clears throat> Anyone me. else? Just remembering the order. I feel like I'm only listening to you, and there's nothing internal going on. <laughs> that just takes time. There, there's nothing that's gonna get you like speed you up with that part, except a little bit of practice every day. Just trying to get through it and. This is, I, I have an older video on YouTube of a walkthrough of this, uh, the whole form actually, and section one, and just putting that on every day and just trying to do it by yourself and look away from the screen is what's going to help you remember. And it's just nothing but practice. That's what's going to get you there. But a little bit of day goes a long way. I have a comment. <clears throat> yeah. In managing my own expectations, I'm just happy I'm here. I follow, I do the best I can, and I'm here okay. and I'm moving my body. And that's my expectations. I know they're low, but it keeps that me from getting is frustrated. The biggest thing, okay? You turning on your computer and logging into Zoom today is the hardest point, right? That is it. Like, th seriously, right? Because you could just be hanging you out. You are it's so crazy. kind. So kind. I, I am being real because sometimes for me too, I see like things pop up with my teachers and I'm like, oh my God. okay. And I have, I do it, you know, and I, I log in and then it's five minutes into class and I'm feeling great, you know, and I'm so glad I'm there, but that logging in is the hardest point. So thank you and give yourself credit. It's just like in yoga, I say rolling out your mat is the hardest part. Like with Tai Chi, it's putting on your shoes, right? <laughs> and then, so you're here. I love it. And with an artist, it's starting on a blank canvas. It's actually putting something on the canvas. That is so true. Instead of staring at that white page, right? So you are like, it's like anything. You're here. You made that commitment. So I love it. All right. Let's do. I love that this brush knee sequence is the hardest portion, right? Okay. So with, in terms of the footwork, remember what we learn in the basics or beginners class, okay? What I want you to do, and I see some of you moving during class, which I love, is I want you to just kind of incorporate this Tai Chi movement into your everyday life. So if you're standing around and just like kind of killing time, just do like, you know, it doesn't have to be full intention moving, okay? But I want you to like feel what it feels like to just move. And what is it like if you just flow with your footwork? Okay. Because that's the hardest part of, of learning Tai Chi is, is connecting the upper and lower bodies, right? So if we can get to a point where we know what a bow stance is, and we're in a bow stance with our left leg forward, and we're like, oh, well, let's go to another bow stance. That feels pretty good. Let's go to another bow stance. Okay. Well, what if I want to go to an empty stance? How would I get there? Step in and step out, right? What if I wanted to go to 12 o'clock? Well, I could step and then step out. Or maybe I want to bow stance that direction. Or maybe I want to go back to nine o'clock. Okay. I want you to feel comfortable to play with the footwork. Okay, now you notice that my footwork right then was different than what it normally looks like, right? I wanted to show you that it's sometimes just about learning that how to change, okay? 
what it feels like to move from stance to stance without 100% attention, just learning how to move for yourself, okay? So that's what I want you to do when I say five minutes a day. Maybe it's five minutes of arms where you want to do this opening again and again, that like water's wave. Maybe it's five minutes a day of standing your footwork, okay? Find something every day at some point that calls out to you to practice, all right? Let's work on coordinating the upper and lower body, okay? Let's start with our brush knees. We'll do our three in a row. So that's going to be that part we turned away from our screen. That's difficult, right? But let's, I know, <laughs> that's the hardest part, right? But let's work on upper and lower body combined together. So remembering when we're doing our brush knees, we're always going to get to a point where our back palm is sitting up and we have a ski slope with our other arm. So what does that mean? If I turn directly to the camera, see the space between the abdomen and your arm? You can do either side, it doesn't matter. I'm doing this side so I can face you on the camera, okay? So you can do the other side. They're both the same. Back hand is sitting up and then you have a nice slope with the other arm. Remembering space, but then when we do brush knee, this is showing opening or maybe tossing someone over your leg, remember? So we wanna have a big movement, remembering the meaning, right? That we could step behind someone and send them over your leg, right? So someone's standing here. So this is a big movement. Okay, this is important. Yes, I just saw bigger movements than I've seen ever from you, okay? <laughs> Remember, big movements and we set up for the strike first. So it's like, essentially, you tried to knock them over your leg and it didn't work. So now you're gonna let your hand come back to your knee and you're gonna strike them. Yes, that was it. So from here, think open and strike. Now it's the same thing on the other side, right? If we start with our right palm up and our left arm in a ski slope, we're turned this way. We're thinking throwing them over your leg. Where's your right hand? In front of the shoulder. So if I drop this arm, look, it's sitting up. It's ready to strike. And then we just go forward. So remembering the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, okay? So the intention is there. We're opening and then we're striking. So we wanna remember to sh show striking and not like a sideways kind of backhanded slap or something, right? We're not like slapping them, we're striking. We're using intention directly forward. And this is one of the hardest things with brush knee for everyone who starts practicing, okay? That we wanna open and we wanna go straight out, okay? Really think straight out, okay? That's it, yes. And when we do this movement, we're starting to the corner direction and we're ending up to straight, okay? So if I face the camera, we're starting to corner and we're going to straight. Now, this is another thing that we see a lot, a common pitfall we say, is turning too much. Okay, so the difference of being straight versus overturned. When we overturn, what happens? We're turning this way, look at my right leg. Here versus here, okay? That weight spills in, okay? Remember to have a solid foundation. Nothing's really changing here. The legs are open and we're pushing and we're turning from our torso, but we're not turning from the legs, okay? We're protecting the knees and keeping them in line so that we go from corner to straight. All right, are you ready to practice? Yes. Okay, let's do it. So we're gonna start going 
nine o'clock, right? This is the way we do it in the form. Why? Because I want you to look away from your screen, <laughs> okay? So remember, we're starting right palm sitting up, left arms in a ski slope. Now take those arms and bring them to your right rear corner. That's it. Now hold for one second. Don't move. Yeah. <laughs> I saw many of you adjust and put more space right here. Okay. <laughs> so remember space between your abdomen. So we want to get away from this. We want open. Why? This is connecting to someone's arm. You don't want that punch to hit you here, right? You don't want to connect to a punch here. You want to connect to it out in front. Beautiful. Okay, let's get started. So from here, open up. So throw someone over your leg and you're halfway, hands in front of your shoulder, forward and back. That's beautiful. Okay, now the transition. Left arm lifts up, weight moves back enough that you can turn on your left heel and turn your left palm over. Hold. I know your legs are going to burn. Trust me, I've been there. Okay, left fingers point to the center of your right arm. Okay, right palm still sitting up. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, so th if you think about it like this, your right arm doesn't move very much. Your left arm is doing the moving here. Okay, now left arm swings down, right arm's going to press down, and we step. Now, when we step, what do we have? The opposite side, left palm sitting up, right arm's in a ski slope, and we're looking towards this corner direction, okay? So this is where we all get hung up, right? Okay, so let's do it, just the arms. All right, so from here, right palm sitting up, left palm down. Remember, the right arm's not moving very much, okay? The left arm's gonna come up and turn. Yes, that was it, okay? So it's just thinking it's sitting, it's gonna raise up and then it's gonna rotate. Beautiful, now swing it down and press down with the right arm. That's it, okay. Let's face each other, ready? Right palm sitting up left hand by your knee. Watch, it doesn't move very much. Up and turn. Swing it down. That's it. Now we open and strike. Okay, let's do it again. Lift and turn. Don't move that left arm, yep. Swing down, press down. Open and strike, lift, turn, swing, sit up the palm. Remember to the shoulder first and then straight out for strike. Okay, right arm lifts and turn, swing down, press. Remember, we're trying to throw them over our leg and then that didn't work so we strike. We lift up and we turn, why? We're connecting to someone's arm, okay? This is a connect and take it away. And then we try to throw them over our leg and strike. So think, lift up, connect. Swing that punch away. Try to send them over your leg and then strike. Now that helped, huh? Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. That's awesome. Okay. So the meaning, all right, part of how we get to the ability to practice by ourselves is taking the time to understand the meaning. Most of us are not here for martial arts. Okay. Knowing the meaning tells us where our body should be. Okay. So that's why we talk about it so much because there's no other reason as to why your palm is directly in line, right? Why, why couldn't it be over here? Why couldn't it be down here? Why couldn't it be out to the side? We want the meaning is striking. 
Why do we have a large arm movement? So that we can open and throw someone over our knee. That's why it's this big thing. Why is there a gap here? This is someone's arm. It came to you to punch and we tried to swing it away. So we swing the punch away and then we're actually reconnecting. I know this is one of the hardest things to imagine, okay, for this whole sequence of section one. The main thing that we're talking about for that reason is that connect and swing down. So someone comes at me and I'm taking their arm and I'm turning it to the side. Now, then their arm's just kind of free floating, right? So it's like their punch went over here. Well, that's why this arm presses down. And that's why we want to have this space so that we can connect here with this portion, okay? So there is the meaning there, but I know that this is one of the hardest ones to imagine. And that's why I focus on the connect and the open and throw them over your leg and then strike, okay? Now that we have the arms, Ready to put it together again? Uh, <laughs> we just gotta keep trying, right? This is good for trying. our brains. It is. Brush knee is the hardest sequence. That's why I spend this time on review for the last, say, four weeks of section one, because I wanna focus on what's working for you or not working, I should say, right? <laughs> okay? So remembering we're starting on the one side, okay? We call it left brush knee because our hands by our left knee, that helps you. But our right palm sitting up, our left arm is in that ski slope, keeping that space, right? And then we take it to the rear corner. Okay, now we're in a bow stance, all right? We're gonna throw them over your leg and then with the rest of that weight, strike with the right palm. Here it is, okay? Right arm stays in this position pretty much. Left arm lifts, turn the left foot and rotate the left arm, weight force back in. That's it. Now swing the left arm down as you step. That was it. Now throw them over your right leg and then strike with the left palm. Now left arm stays where it is. Right arm lifts. Rotate the arm and the leg together. Swing it down and step. Open up and strike. Now this is where we can keep going if we had space in our house, right? So that's the cool thing. With brush knee, wave hands like clouds, you can do as many as you want, okay? So let's do it again. We're gonna do, and we're gonna keep backing up, okay? We're just gonna keep going. <laughs> Why? Because we can, so we wanna burn it in. All right, so starting just with our right brush knee at the end, we'll start here, because this is where we're gonna keep linking to. Right palm striking, left hand by the knee. Lift the left arm up, shift back. Turn the foot and arm together, weight pours in. Swing down, think reconnect. Now throw them over your leg. It then works, so we strike. Shift back, left arm stays, right arm lifts, turn, swing, step, open, and strike. Okay, shifting back if you have to. Lift the left arm, turn together, swing, step, open up, and strike. Okay. Left palm stays, right arm lifts, turn together, pour that weight back in. So check here, that weight back in right away so that we can transition and step out, open and strike. So we can do it again, shift back, turn, swing down, looking away, step, open and strike okay is it feeling a little bit better good i'm getting it a little bit my problem is the left side i don't know why i can't get the left side there's only one <laughs> that's why it's literally it's there's only one 
okay? And it's the one major time that you cannot see me. And because we're in this virtual world, there's no one else. This is the great thing about in-person classes <laughs> because you have someone you can look on that side, you have someone you can look on this side because when you attend a, an in-person class and say you're the newest person there, you are getting stuck directly in the center of class. Like if you learn with one of, say, you know, my fellow instructors from the Young family, this is how we do it. We take the new people and we put you right in the center so that you are fully surrounded. Now, wouldn't it be great if you could like take multiple monitors and like, you know, mm -hmm. surround yourself with monitors or something in this virtual world <laughs> so that you have me on all sides, you know? But that's a little extreme, right? So <laughs> we do our best and that's why looking away is the hardest part. It's also because there's only one. So you only get to practice every time we do section one, you only get to practice that one time. And the other one we do four times. So that's why it's hard. Don't beat yourself up. You're doing great. You're really doing great. All right. How are we feeling about Terry Block and Punch? How are we feeling about cross hand better. or better? Okay. All right, let's practice it because we've been working on this looking away, okay? This is another movement where you have to look away. You cannot look at your screen. If you're looking at your screen, there's no martial arts meaning there. You're not looking in the right direction. You're gonna feel wobbly and off balance. You have to look away from your screen, okay? So let's talk real quick what that means when the difference between brush, knee to parry, block, and punch. We have the same exact transition. We lift the left arm up and we turn. That's the same. But instead of just the left arm going down, you're gonna imagine a string connected between both arms. They're gonna swing down together and you're gonna make a fist. Now, when you reach this point, it should feel exactly the same as brush knee. The only difference is we have a fist, okay? So if I turn directly to the camera, do you notice the same thing? The left palm is sitting up. We have our ski slope. We have that space between our chest. We just have a fist instead of a palm. But the transition is the same turning. It's a different thing with both arms go down and then it reaches the same point. Nice. Now from here, imagine connecting with the forearm connecting out. Nice. Now, when we do this, I'm gonna to turn to you for a second. Back of the arm, okay? So imagine if you went to connect to someone, you would use this side of your fist. If you were like smashing, we do this later in the form, okay? The reason I say that is I saw some turned hands, okay? When we're here, it's the same kind of thing. See how it turns a little bit? Yeah, there it is. So it's rotating and connecting out. So we're using this portion here, okay? This is connecting. So if I'm right in line with the camera, someone's coming at me, I'm going to connect, connect with this portion. And then we take it to the side, okay? So we think connect to the side. Yes, okay? So connect and bring it to the fist, the hip, to, okay? So we think if we turn, we connect here. We know this meaning, right? Connect down. We're in that peri or uh, brush knee, right? Connect, pull it back, and then punch through, okay? So inside of the forearm, outside of the forearm, preparing, and then punching. Connect, connect punch. So you can think parry and parry, or you can think deflect down, parry to the side, and then punch. That looks really good. I think figure eight. Figure eight. It's exactly it. Thank you. I don't mention that all the times, but that's exactly what it is. It's a figure eight. It's a circle or an infinity symbol, right? So we can just think connect and connect. 
you have a question or a comment, come on in. <laughs> All right, so just, I want you to think, that's a great thing. It's infinity symbol or figure eight because we're connecting, connecting, and then punching, straight line, right? So whenever we're talking martial arts, we're thinking when someone's coming at us or we're, we're dealing with an attack, okay? We're going to use a circle, okay? We're going to use that soft yielding power of a circle or a curve to deflect to the side and deflect again. But then when it's our turn, we're going to use that straight line to get the most power, okay? So this is something that can help you as well. If you know that we're dealing with an opponent's attack, it's going to be a nice curve, a figure eight. And then when it's our turn, we're going to make a straight line from our fist up to our shoulder, okay? And remembering when we're here with our fist, it's pretty easy to just send that elbow straight back, okay? And then see how the shoulder opens a lot? We want to think corner direction. Now, I know that this is difficult to see on camera, okay? I'm going to turn this way. It's the difference of being here where we're squeezing our shoulder blades together or having our back rounded and our chest is slightly sinking in so that our elbow goes to the corner. Okay, so again, here versus here. Okay, I know I, I'm getting those weird looks. This is a, a, an important thing, okay? When we're, and you can do this with like, just do it with both palms or fists, okay? When you squeeze your elbows together and you send them right back, your chest opens, okay? When you're breathing, the energy will then stop here. We want the energy to sink down. So feel the difference of when you're here squeezing your shoulder blades together versus, and how does that affect your breath? So take a big inhale with them squeeze together. How far can you breathe? Exhale and release. Now relax. Inhale, can you breathe down to your belly now? Okay. So this is the true center of our body, right? This is center, right? They call heart, mind, or heart center, okay? This is center. We want to breathe down to our center, okay? We don't want to stop that breath here. We want to breathe down to our lower lungs, and if it's possible, down to our belly. Do you ever have grandkids, or you ever see little toddlers running around, their little bellies go like this, okay? They're like literally full belly breathing. They're getting the most energy and breath and oxygen optimization of their body. Okay, we want the same thing. But especially for women, we're told not to let our bellies relax, right? <laughs> so for every woman in class, this is gonna be even harder. Guys still have the same thing, but they can tend to relax just a little bit more. But every one of us needs to let go, okay? I want you to let go. And in that letting go comes parry, block, and punch where you're here, you're holding back, and I want you to be here, okay? So we have our 10 principles of practice. One is chest sinking in and back rounded. You've already achieved shoulders sinking down, elbows sinking down. Next is chest sinking in, back rounded, okay? Yeah, I see a difference, and I know it's weird. It's hard to kind of comprehend when we first start practicing, but I'm telling you this now so then we can continue to practice. All right, let's get our figure eight one more time, and then we're going to connect legs. All right, think inside, connect down. Outside, connect down, set up, and punch. Nice. Okay, connect down, connect out to the side, and punch. All right, ready? Let's do it. All right, from brush knee. Okay, just like that brush knee transition, left arm lifts, arm and leg turn, weight pours back in. Now, both arms go down, circle, make a fist, check, left palm sitting up, right arms in a ski slope, beautiful, carry out in front, weight pours in, this is your checkpoint, see here, all that weight's in that right leg, 
Now, left arm and leg together. Now check, chest sinking in back rounded and punch. Left palm faces the right forearm, leaning into it. Nice, beautiful. Okay, let's do it again. Brush knee. Left arm lift, turn arm and leg together. Pour that weight back in. Very important, okay? Because now as both arms go down circle, you can pick up, touch with the right heel. Open up the right foot, parry out in front. Weight pours in. Check, look at your screen for a second. Where are you compared to me? Connecting out in front, weight all the way in basically. There we go. Now step out, left arm and leg together. Remember, chest is open to the corner, then we turn to straight. Nice work. Those punches are looking good. When we end the punch, remember, let me see if I can line up. Okay. See my hands at my door jam ish, I think. Okay. When we're here, this is holding someone back. There's a person, okay? You've got them, say, by their shoulder or their chest. You're holding them back. When we punch, you're punching through them. See how this hand is staying in line with the door jam? It's like in three-dimensional space because we're holding someone back, and then we're imagining punching through, okay? So whenever we do a punch, we're, we're not thinking about like, we're not thinking about ending, say right where the door jam is, that's the person. And we're like, oh, we just packed you. No, we're, we're thinking we're going all the way through, okay? It's the same thing, like when you're pushing something heavy, you're not thinking about just like connecting to that heavy object and just touching it, right? You're thinking you're gonna move from like that heavy object and you're not just gonna like move a little bit. You're gonna really dig into it, okay? The same thing with our punch, okay? And so that's why when we do this, that palm is in line with the person and then we punch through, okay? Let's do it one more time before we close class. Let's get one more bit of practice in, all right? So from brush knee, Okay, left arm lifts, turn together. Both arms down, circle, make a fist, step, parry out to the side, weight pours in, hold back your opponent, you're imagining holding them, now punch through them. All right, now that looks good. Those arm positions look really good. <laughs> All right, do we have any questions before we close class today? I have comment. a comment. Sure. I think the symbolism is really great and, and it's about owning your power, thinking about your power. And I mean, you know, there's like a, there's something about energetically, there's something energetically about Connecting your movement. mind to the movement. It's that it's very important to own your power. Okay. That is a great way to put it. Okay. We have to understand in Tai Chi how much power we can create. Okay. And that creation of power stems from whole body movement. And that is why we move slow. Okay. Many people don't understand that. In Tai Chi, we move slowly so that we can gain more power when we move fast, okay? So we, we say that our opponent might move first, we move second, but we arrive first, okay? If we're using it as a martial art movement, okay? We're saying that we're taking that time to understand where someone's moving and we might take a moment but we're going to arrive first and we're going to have more power. Why? In Kung Fu, you're moving really fast, right? It's just snappy movements, okay? We're moving back and forth and we're not using whole body, 
okay? So I might like come in, but look, it's like small movement, okay? It's Tai Chi is whole body. You're creating power through connecting your mind and the movement. And you knowing that is like a whole nother level you just reached in your practice, okay? So I want you to connect with the martial arts mean. That is your goal. Even if you're not here for it, because you're gonna change your form and your practice. You're gonna practice slowly, but eventually if you ever went to move quickly, you would be shocked by the power that you create. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm serious. Because you just it it trading slowly in everything arrives together, coordinating upper and lower body together, the power is just next level, okay? Because you're not just using your arms, you're using the biggest muscles in your body, your legs and your torso to get that explosion out to your arms. I love it. Anyone else? This, this is amazing. Your practice is changing every week and it's exciting for me. When you post this, this is gonna be such a great, tape to practice with because it really broke it. I don't know, it made it clearer today. <laughs> awesome. I will make every effort to post this tonight then. Oh, so so much, you guys, whenever you post it. <laughs> I just want, I, I love that you guys are practicing. Okay. That's why I post. I want you to have this. I want you to say, this was a good class for me. I want to play it on replay. Okay. <laughs> that's it right there. Okay. And you know, I know that not everyone can be here. So I want you to have that ability if you miss the class to go back and feel like you're part of it, that you didn't miss anything. You're here still, okay? That's why I do it. All right. Oh, they're on, they're on YouTube. I'll drop that link for you right now. So all the classes, and I know it's kind of a contradiction for some people that, you know, you're, you're here and you're, well, why are you posting them? I'm posting them for you. I, you, it, you're here in class, okay? Someone who watches this outside is not going to get the benefits that you have during class. So that link is in the chat and it's just on YouTube. It's the best way to share videos. So those are all available from like six months now of doing these classes and you can check them all out. You can start at the beginning of this form and work your way through all of these Tai Chi classes. There's one class, uh, they're labeled in groups. One says beginner Tai Chi, one says advanced uh, Tai Chi forms. That's the one you wanna check out for this class today. All right, anyone else? All right, everyone. Class again on Monday, same time, if you wanna join me for the beginner class, or I'll see you next week for this class. Thank you so much for joining me today. Carol, before you I sign off, yeah. I have a technical.